China is getting into the venture capital business in a big way, raising $231 billion in 2015, effectively tripling assets under management in just one year. What's the plan for this money? Who's managing it? How will it be spent? I want to bring in our Asia Tech Companies editor, Peter Elstrom in Tokyo, and Blue Run Ventures general partner, Jonathan Ebinger, still with, with us. Blue Run invests a lot of money in China. But Peter, first of all, lay out, we, we were just talking about the U.S. versus Europe when it comes to venture capital. What are the trends in China? Well, China has been seeing a big rise in venture capital investments from the private sector. Uh, last year, uh, the amount of money going into startups more than doubled to about $37 billion. Uh, so it's certainly been uh, investing a lot of money in startups. A lot of this is follow-on from the Alibaba IPO, of course, the biggest IPO um, on record uh, so far. A lot of the VCs saw the opportunity to invest in China and come up with some kind of hits in the future. Now, this is very different. This is money that's coming uh, from uh, local and central government uh, agencies, and they're looking to put even more money into venture capital. The numbers are kind of staggering here, so there are certainly some risks. I think the the uh, reaction that we got was that uh, that it looks like this could be a big problem because there's so much money that could flood into the market. I think the big questions are going to be how quickly this money is invested and then exactly how they invest the money in the market. Jonathan, have you felt more competition for deals in China? We have, and that was really even before this new onslaught of capital came into the market as, as being discussed here. This is a, a real game changer. I mean, to put it in perspective, the amount that they brought in last year equals the total amount of, managed, of money managed in the U.S. To, in total. They did it in one year. And what trends are you seeing in the startup scene there? I mean, we're, we're dealing with a broader question about slowing economic growth in China. Is it having an impact on, on startups and optimism around startups? Well, the optimism is definitely on the rise. Whether that's backed up with increased innovation, it's hard to say. Innovation and dollars deployed don't always go hand in hand. Innovation, as I said earlier in the, in the segment, is a relatively steady pace of innovation. Adding a lot of dollars doesn't necessarily create innovation just on its on the pace of it. Peter, what are the big risks investors are concerned about when it comes to Chinese startups specifically? I think the big risks are that um, they, they would be worried if this money got deployed very, very quickly. I mean, it's a staggering amount of money, right? More than $300 billion. So if the government agencies try to push this out very fast, uh, you could see the money going into some pretty terrible investments. And China has tried to do this before, uh, making uh, heavy investments in solar, for example, and steel and other industries like that. And sometimes it hasn't turned out well when, t when too much money is going into particular sectors. The other key question is whether they're going to partner up with experienced venture capitalists because you don't want government officials with very little experience in startups or the technology community trying to pick out investments that's probably going to end fairly terribly too on the other hand they could partner up i mean obviously we've seen in the u.s there are a lot of um there are a lot of government agencies calpers puts money into venture capital funds if you see this money going in with experienced venture capitalists then there's a better opportunity i would say for some positive returns so jonathan what are you bullish on and what do you you staying awake from when it comes to the kinds of companies you're investing in in China? Well, we're staying away from traditional industries. That category seems very well funded. And like what? Well, heavy machinery, even communications, optical networking, businesses like that. So no social networking in China. Well, that as well. That's <laughs> right. Uh, the areas that are interesting really are more things around health care, things that play into the demographic of that country, the rising middle class, social media. As you know, we were investors in Ganji, the biggest exit of the year last year, uh, worldwide in venture. Social media is, has yet to really monetize very well beyond China-specific companies due to regulatory uh, regimes that are there. You know, I, I was recently speaking with Jeff Weiner, and LinkedIn has found a, a way into China. It's still small business there, but growing. Do you, uh, do you think that other American social networks like Facebook and Twitter have any chance? Well, I don't think they do at this point, but not because of the regulatory regime. I think because there already are strong players in place. Mm. You know, Sina Weibo is doing a nice job already. There's, that market is pretty well saturated. You have near 100% smartphone to social network uh, uh, mm. compliance already. So there's not a lot of room for a new player that I see right now. All right. Jonathan Ebinger of Blue Run Ventures. Peter Elstrom for Bloomberg News in Tokyo. Thank you both.